The latest in a recent line of impressive anime adaptations of video games, Cyberpunk Edgerunners burst onto our screens in fantastic fashion, focusing on the low-level shenanigans of its eclectic cast of sci-fi punks as they navigate the never-ending dystopia that is Night City. Now, while we were watching the series, it got us thinking. There are so many incredible cyberpunk games out there, and I'll be honest, I was pretty much downloading them as soon as Edge Runners finished, just so I could keep that neon dream alive. Given that both were created during the technological boom of the 1950s and achieved popularity in mainstream pop culture at roughly the same time in the late 1970s and early 1980s, it is no surprise that gaming and cyberpunk are so closely related. The more challenging task is figuring out how to distinguish games that cherry-picked elements of the cyberpunk aesthetic from those that are, or at least intended to be, true instances of cyberpunk fiction. In order to do so, we must identify the main themes of the genre, which include a dystopian view of the near future, an interest in alternative digital realities, drug or technology-assisted human modification, and a social context in which corporate interests have long surpassed the quaint idea of elected government. Ugh, that last one hits a little bit too close to home. In any case, we've put together a list of our 11 favourite cyberpunk games that should serve as the main course to an Edge Runners starter. Set in the year 2072, System Shock sees you playing as a nameless hacker blackmailed by a rogue executive from the Tri Optimum Corporation into extracting information on a brand new bioweapon from Shodan, the AI that controls Citadel Station. That alone already places System Shock squarely in cyberpunk territory, and the game's first-person perspective and non-linear construction gives players plenty of agency to rummage around and explore its implications. The game also unfurled in the real world, meat space, and the digital realm of cyberspace. More important still was the freedom the game gives you to define and upgrade yourself over the course of the game, depending on your preferred style of play. It's a mechanic that we take for granted today, seen in everything from historical brawlers to fantasy RPGs, but System Shock pioneered this notion of the player character as a living canvas, onto which different skills and abilities can be added through implants. What had been a background concept in earlier titles was now a core gameplay idea, and it's no exaggeration to say that gaming would never be the same once System Shock normalised it. Few are the AAA games where upgrades and skill trees don't feature these days, and the very concept is cyberpunk to its core. Can't do something? Enhance yourself until you can. A fully-fledged remake of this groundbreaking title is in the works with all new visuals, updated controls, and an overhauled interface. At the time of writing, it's planned for release in March 2023, so it's not too long until we can take on Showdown again, but with some modern-day polish. Traditionally, in Cyberpunk, the idea of implants and upgrades was one that gave the underdog a fighting chance against a corrupt and oppressive state, or allowed for criminal acts such as data smuggling. In the world of Deus Ex, though, they are the gateway to superpowers, stealth, strength, speed, that would make the average comic book hero blush. The whole series is worthy of a mention here, but it's 2016's Mankind Divided that we'll be focusing on. It was the entry where the series really dug into the philosophies behind cyberpunk, fully exploring the ramifications of having augmented humans running around. You explore Prague's waterlogged streets as Adam Jensen, a heavily cybernetically enhanced security expert, on the lookout for bioterrorists and shady groups inciting conflict between the augmented and the general public. The gameplay combines elements of stealth and shooters to emphasise a player choice-led approach to problem solving with a semi-open environment and a narrative that is loaded with choices and side quests. It's fair to say that imagining the state of the world in 2029 from now probably doesn't include cybernetically enhanced human beings, but you never know what could happen in the next seven years. Either way, despite being the middle game in what ultimately turned out to be an incomplete trilogy, any fans of cyberpunk concepts and motifs really should play Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Invisible Inc. is a turn-based tactics stealth video game incorporating elements of roguelike gameplay, think XCOM, 
But instead of blasting aliens in the face to save planet Earth, or attempting to anyway, I still can't get over how many times a 99% chance hit misses, you're sneaking into secure locations belonging to megacorps and stealing as much money and equipment as possible along the way. Yes, militarised corporations are taking over the world, and you must use a team of cybernetic agents, plus a powerful hacking AI, to liberate money, gear, upgrades and captives from their installations until you're sufficiently well equipped to take on the dark conspiracy. You act as the remote operator for an espionage agency that's come under attack from multinational corporations and directs agents in covert missions, acquiring resources and support in order to enable relocation of the agency's computer system to a safe haven within a limited amount of time. Locations, threats and loot are randomly generated, forcing you to create and adapt your strategy using agents, items, augments and programs and adapt to your surroundings, meaning each playthrough is vastly different and you'll never get complacent. Invisible Ink's strength is in how it manages tension, and everything is planned to keep you on the verge of catastrophe while taking the perfect amount of risk. You lose if you play it aggressively, essentially. And you play it cautiously, you also lose because the level of security and the number of guards increase as you take more turns. You must use the ideal ratio of boldness and cunning, planning and improvisation. Much like the lives of one of its secret agents, this is a game defined by short, sharp thrills and one that will always leave you wondering if you have time for just another run. Imagine 2084 as if seen through the eyes of someone living in the 1980s. That's Observer. In the aftermath of a digital plague that cost the lives of thousands, resulting in war and rampant drug use, the city of Krakow, Poland, rots. Buildings crumble, their walls coated in muck and murals, but the holes and degradation are digitally papered over by holographic projections, as if an architect's blueprints were superimposed on top, projecting pristine exteriors that aren't really there. A ruined future holding on to a holographic lie. Observer is a psychological horror detective game where you play as Daniel Lazarski, an ageing snoop with a head full of forensic gadgetry who travels to an apartment block to investigate a mysterious message from his estranged son. Shortly after he arrives, certain events trigger a lockdown, leaving Daniel to explore the cramped winding structure, knocking on doors, talking to residents and picking over grisly crime scenes using two vision modes, one for analysis of mechanisms, the other for organic evidence. Where conversation and old-fashioned detective work aren't enough, you'll fall back on Lazarski's signature trick as one of the eponymous observers, the ability to jack into somebody's brain and relive their memories as a series of vivid hallucinations. It is in these hallucinations that the game leans towards a more traditional corridor-based horror game, but with enough variety to keep you invested and enough scares to keep you on the edge of your seat. We, and seemingly the entirety of the UK games media, adore Stray. On the surface, this is a game that tells a simple science fiction of a cat who, after falling into the city's underbelly, must escape a mysterious place with the hope of reuniting with their family. But beneath that is something more. Although Stray is best known as the cat game, it also offers a fresh take on the cliches from within the cyberpunk genre, including its technologically sophisticated dystopia, robotics and AI. Stray is a third-person adventure game set amidst the detailed, neon-lit alleys of a decaying, dystopian cyber city populated by robots and the murky environments of its seedy underbelly. Also, you're a cat. The game tells its story through a series of chapters, some releasing you into an open world perfect for investigation, while others focus around navigating a section of the decaying city. Roaming surroundings high and low, Defending against unforeseen threats and solving the mysteries of this unwelcoming place inhabited by curious droids and dangerous creatures. Through this, you see the robot's attempts to carve out an existence, but learn their efforts are restricted due to the actions and society structure created by those long dead. The different threads combine into one larger narrative about the lengths people will take to survive and how this desire can become polluted. 
Stray's city is a claustrophobic construction of houses squeezed tightly together, minicule safe open spaces and neon lights offering harsh comfort in the endless night. Calling this the perfect playground for an adventurous stray cat would be an understatement, as it's chock-a-block with easter eggs, so much so that Ian put together a list of 25 of them that was filled with more puns than you can shake your cute little paw rat. I first looked at Lo-Fi in VR Corner over two years ago now, and whilst it is available in early access, it's technically not due for release until Q4 this year, so we are cheating a little bit with this entry, but the demo version on itch.io is still playable, so it still counts. As the player, you are Lo-Fi, the street name given to those who cannot merge with the platform, a ubiquitous virtual reality simulation where most of the population now live their lives. You are a police officer and have been transferred to a particularly crime-ridden section of City Block 303. The only other inhabitants of note in your jurisdiction are other Lo-Fi, and the human intelligence or lower artificial life forms who have remained among the citizens after the AI singularity. Lo-Fi is a massive open-world sandbox-style adventure with action elements and an emphasis on exploration and character-driven story. Like a holodeck program, the player is free to explore the city, further narratives and even just hang out in the arcades. Lo-Fi's developer Anti-Cleric has lofty goals for the game upon its release, aiming for it to feel like a real world, with hundreds of crimes and stories to solve and explore, complete with branching narratives and dialogue. Only time will tell how successful they are, but as things stand at the moment, it looks set to be a spectacular escape for any cyberpunk fan. Soma is a sci-fi horror game from Frictional Games, the creators of Amnesia The Dark Descent. It is an unsettling story about identity, consciousness and what it means to be human. Your journey takes you through multiple stations on Pathos 2, an underwater station, as well as along the seabed itself, on a mission of both self-discovery and far greater importance, delving through locked terminals and secret documents to uncover the truth behind the chaos. Seeking out the last remaining inhabitants and taking part in the events that ultimately shaped the fate of the situation, danger lurks in every corner. Corrupted humans, twisted creatures, insane robots, and even an inscrutable omnipresent AI. Despite those more obvious horror trappings, it is through Soma's cyberpunk themes, namely the Ship of Theseus paradox and continuity, that it unveils its true terrors. As you meet and discover characters throughout Pathos 2, you'll start questioning at what point a person stops becoming human if they're replaced piece by piece with cybernetics, and whether this affects their individual and collective value. These characters have had copies of their minds uploaded to the automatons throughout the station, which is where continuity comes in. As copies, are they any less valid than the original? Can and should multiple copies be allowed to coexist? Which version is the main one? Playing through Soma, you're forced to confront these questions and act on them one way or another. Not just with simplistic binary good or bad decisions, but seriously troubling ethical quandaries that are never easy to live with. Cloudpunk is a story-based exploration game that sees you taking control of Rayner, a new driver working for the semi-legal delivery company Cloudpunk, based in the sprawling city of Nivalis. You go everywhere, from the streets below to the spires that pierce the grey clouds high above before scraping the edge of the troposphere. No delivery job is too dangerous and no one is faster than a cloudpunk driver. Nivalis is a large, unwelcoming metropolis that stretches out for miles beneath the jets of your hover vehicle. It is a confusing network of freeways and high-rises that blink neon in the mist. Without ever softening the city's razor-sharp edges, the billboards and commercials flashing lights in various hues of blue, yellow, white and orange reflect off concrete walls. Despite the darkness and continual rain, the city is nevertheless very alive, bustling with the type of folk that only venture out at night. At every level, both figuratively and literally, of society, you will encounter a wide variety of characters, including androids, AI and dishonest humans. Some of them will want to talk to you, but the majority won't. 
Everybody in Novalis has a tale to tell, and anything can happen in the course of a single evening. The city's voxel artworks makes it more charming than gritty, but it's a joy to explore, with plenty of NPCs to chat with and thoughtful quests scattered throughout the game. And there's something special about cruising along in your flying hovercar, embodying scenes from Blade Runner that have long burned their way into your mind. Originally starting life in a cyberpunk-themed game jam, Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action is a booze em up all about technology, relationships and post-dystopia life. In this world, corporations reign supreme, all human life is infected with nanomachines designed to oppress them, and the terrifying white knights ensure that everyone obeys the law. The game doesn't revel in the lofty fantasy elements of the world though, Instead, focusing on the more down-to-earth realism that will feel familiar if you've played Papers, Please. You are a bartender at VA11 Hall A, affectionately nicknamed Valhalla. So naturally, I love it. The art of mixology is reduced to the manipulation of just five canned ingredients. Adelhyde, Bronson Extract, Powdered Delta, Flanaglide, and Caramatrine. Your job is to listen to the people's problems and try to make them drinks to grant them a brief respite. Beyond listening, there isn't much you can do, and that's the key. You're not the main subject of this game. You don't have all the power. Neither you nor any of your clients will ever be able to save the day. You're all just average people chatting over drinks with vibrant colours and grumbling about the government. Sound familiar? Because it does to me. The storyline branches, not based on traditional choices or decisions, but through the drinks you prepare for your customers. This, coupled with the visuals reminiscent of old Japanese adventure games for the PC-98, give Valhalla the feel of something more akin to a visual novel. You're along for the ride, discovering the story over a few drinks with your pixelated clientele. It's cool to be kind in Citizen Sleeper, a low-intensity, minimalist kind of chill-hop sci-fi game set on a half-ruined space station floating between freedom and indenture. Characters here are guarded at first, before, after an investment of a little more than your time, dropping their walls to reveal themselves as almost unanimously gentle, considerate and warm. What really grabs you, though, is how this is reflected in the nature of Citizen Sleeper itself. You are a sleeper, a corporate-owned, replicant-on-a-budget entity with a generic robotic body and emulated mind, based on a real human but with reduced memories and even fewer rights, unsure of whether that's enough to even count as being alive, and all the while trying to remain hidden from those that would hunt you. Citizen Sleeper blends video game and tabletop RPG elements, using dice, clocks and skills to create a player-led experience, where you choose your path in a rich and responsive world. You choose what to do and how to do it. You can toil in the yards or take a bar shift, for instance. Search the markets for rare components or grab some street food. Make or break alliances, uncover truths and escape those that hunt you. Learning to survive and ultimately thrive one cycle at a time is the aim of the game here. The internal game of keeping your two main stats, condition and energy up, becomes a kind of juggling act as you work towards some outcomes while holding your breath about others, and soon story elements are popping like fireworks all over your expanding space station map. You begin to feel a game and story in flow, and it's then that the richness of Citizen Sleeper emerges that a quiet grip begins to squeeze as a mystery takes hold. You saw this coming, surely. It would be tough to do a list of games inspired by cyberpunk edgerunners without featuring the game that inspired that series. Based on Mike Pondsmith's Cyberpunk, a 1988 tabletop RPG that drew from the gritty realism of 1980s cyberpunk science fiction, including Hardwired and Blade Runner, 2077 is an open-world action-adventure story set in Night City, a megalopolis obsessed with power, glamour and body modification. You play as V, a mercenary outlaw going after a one-of-a-kind implant that's supposedly the key to immortality. You can customise your character's cyberware, skill set and playstyle, and explore a vast city where the choices you make shape the story and the world around you. There's no point sugarcoating it. 
Cyberpunk 2077's launch was a car crash as catastrophic as any of the viral glitches the game spat out from some overloaded Night City crossroads. Since then though, CG Projekt has issued update after update, resulting in a game that actually lives up to the original hype. Night City itself is your character's biggest antagonist. It goes beyond the simple parodies, the annoying talking heads and the dull billboards. The sounds are expertly coordinated. Buzzing flies, spinning machinery, shrieking horns and shouting bystanders. The very point of it is its hostility. Night City is an unlivable, unbearable place where you feel relentlessly watched and on edge and where V can hardly maintain their composure. Although the main character in Cyberpunk 2077 appears to be losing their mind, this is not, as one might expect, the result of augmentation. Instead, it's the result of unavoidable sabotage, an unfortunate turn of circumstances the player has no control over. CD Projekt Red has insisted it's totally, fully committed to developing the Cyberpunk IP, despite confirming Phantom Liberty as the game's only expansion. Earlier this week, they announced that a full sequel was on the far, far horizon, codenamed Orion, promising that it'll take the cyberpunk franchise further and continue harnessing the potential of the dark future universe. Of course, that's a long way off, and there's a whole lot of cyberpunking to be done before then. So, wake the fuck up, Samurai. We have a city to burn. And there we have it, 11 incredible games we wanted to play after watching Cyberpunk Edgerunners. But what about you? Have you watched Edgerunners yet? Have you played 2077 since it was fixed? What's your favourite Cyberpunk game? Let us know in the comments below. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe to Eurogamer for almost daily videos about video games and, of course, Thank you so much for watching. Now, I'm off to think about what augmentations I'd get for myself. Hmm, maybe auto jorts? I'd set off for ears that could block out your puns. Oi! Oh, maybe I should change my choice to an augmentation that stops words from hurting. Oh. Bye! Bye.